Okay. So, yesterday I asked the question, has anyone got a particular food compulsion that they would like to, to get rid of or get greater choices about? And this morning I was somewhat surprised when a certain person came in with a bowl of sweeties on one hand and a bowl of pastries and bread on the other hand. Cool. Which I may have to do the technique on myself at the same time. Okay, so would that young person like to come up on up the front of the room? I told you it's the Peter and Barry show. Which one, if you're going to change one of those, which one would cause the greatest amount of change? Because it may be that just by knocking out one of those, it will knock out the other ones with the as we, as we, Right now, as you look at them, which are you more inclined to want to eat? zero to ten with zero being no desire at all to eat and ten being really want to eat them. Where are you right now? Around about ten. Right about ten. <laughs> Come on, keep looking at it. Keep looking at it. So what would have to happen to make that a twelve? Not a lot really. <laughs> what would have to happen to make those a twelve? Maybe they might be warm. Warm, yeah, because they've been in the fridge for a while. Mm. So if, 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 they were, if they were warm right now, and you can smell the aroma of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does that make it as well? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Great. What would have to happen to make, make it back to a 10? A little bit cooler. Okay. What would have to happen to make those an 8? What would have to happen to those that are on the plate to make them to make? Perhaps I knew they weren't fresh. Okay, so if you knew they weren't, if they weren't fresh, what then they'd be a little bit sort of slightly, a little bit slightly stale. Mm. They'd be a little bit harder than they would be if they were just for at the oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine them like that, if you think about them like that, does that make it an eight? Well, probably it's about seven. Yeah. Okay. So what would have to happen to make those five? It'd have to be very old. How? Three or four days. Three or four days old. So if you can imagine those three or four days old right now, so they'd be like really tough and you'd like on the top. Yeah? Mm. If you can imagine like that now, would that make it a five? Mm. So it's five right now. Right. Yeah. So you look at them like that, what would have to happen to make those a three? Depends on Yeah. Maybe even that stale is a bit of mold on it. Yeah, mold on it, like green. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if you could see some, uh, there was stale and there was some spores of mold on there. Yeah. Mm. That making a three. Probably about two, but cut, cut the green off. <laughs> yeah. So it's a bit lower than a three. About a two. Mm. Yeah, so as you look at them right now, imagine them with some green mold on them. They're about two, yeah. Mm. What would have to make, happen to make them a zero? There's a maggot coming out of that one. The maggot coming out of that one, yeah. Yeah. What about the maggot coming out of that one? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So if you'd imagine that it's a little bit like that, the maggot coming out of the green, yeah. Now, you need to look at it. <laughs> if you if you see them like that, the maggot coming out of the green around the edges and they're really tough, is that a zero? Yeah. 
Yeah. What would have to happen to make them minus two? The maggot at the other end. The maggot at the other end, yeah. Well, half a maggot. Half a maggot, yeah, and you're wondering where the other <laughs> half is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you look at them like that, the maggot coming out of each end of green, is that minus two? Mm. Yeah, because you really need to look at them. Um, now, what would have to happen to make them minus four? Yeah, so you know what maggots were. Mm. Yeah, so if you can see maggots going on them like that now, yeah, as you look at them, yeah, you've got to look at them. Yeah. Does that make them what, minus four? Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, they can take a real good look. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what have to happen to make them a minus six? What? Let me give you a little bit of help now. Yeah, please. <clears throat> what if um, you had a party and you had these on the table, but um, you throw them away in the, in the rubbish bin, and then you've gone away on, on holiday two bits. And when you came back, you looked in the waste bin, and there they are, all falling with maggots. Yeah. There's a little over. But you also notice that there's some cigarette butts in the cigarette ash. And would that make it minus, minus one? Absolutely, sure, we've gone down further. Yeah. What would have to happen to make them a minus 10? Yeah. Well, I suppose it would be sickle as well, the same party that you found. Yeah, so if there was some, someone, had blown, someone had blown chunks over that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's a bit of tomato skin, because there's always tomato mm. skin. Yeah. 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 So there's a bit of, a bit of sick on there, a bit of puke on there. And there's maggots on there, some faggots <coughs> in there as well. As you look at them now, where are they now? Well, I'll finish with them. You finish with them? You should have a good look, have a good look. Smell them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, smell, the, smell the maggots, smell the sick. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah that, no, you need to hold on to them. What I have to happen to make them, what, like a minus 20? Well, they're going far enough now. No, no, <laughs> if, if, if they were, I mean, I wouldn't want you to feel sick as you look. And the, what would have to happen to make them a minus 20? Can't go much further than what we're well, what, what if in, in that bin that, that there's the, the maggots in there, there is the sick, um, and there's some fag bugs, but what if, if they were lying on a soiled nappy? <laughs> you know, a baby's nappy. It's not like the normal brown shit, it's the, the, you know, the real good stuff. Yeah, the good kind of stuff, yeah? <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to see them like that, in a big pile of nappy, with maggots going all over them, sick on them, fag bugs, as you look at them like now, where are they now? Do you, would you like one? No, no, no. Peter, come on, come on. You, you do like? No, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no thank you. No, no thank you. No. That one's all right. Seriously? Seriously? Are you sure? No, no. You sure that? You know, well, no, I thought it was. No. <laughs> what about that? That's right. No. But if you like, think about that one as well. No? And the, and the brick? Oof. <laughs> But hey, hang on, look, what, what, what if they were in the same bin as well, and they were also coming in here, what would happen? Yeah, come on, you like, you No. Okay, smell them, smell them. Oh, nice. Imagine that. I don't want to. No, go on, have one. No, no, go on. You deserve it. Be good at it. Go on. Really big hand. <laughs> Is that a cool technique or what? Now, if you were thinking about if you were thinking about doing weight loss classes or demonstrations, do you think that'd be the one you want to do? Because it's because what are the cool to last? Um, well, if the, the, the lady that we did with in the previous one in April, saying to go by it's permanent. Have a go, you put your glasses on, you haven't had a really good look. 
And it's a real simple technique, isn't it? There's only one word to learn. What would have to happen to make that up? One second. What would have to happen to make it happen? Okay. So let's go through the, the things to it. So on page 207. Now you can use this to change the emotional intensity of any experience. I know we demonstrated it in, for knocking out a compulsion, but you can also use it to increase the emotional intensity of any other experience. So it doesn't have to necessarily be for knocking something out, you can use it for increasing something. <laughs> so the key is, first of all, you need to associate the person to what they want to change. And obviously we did that by having a point in hand. It's very important that the person holds it in their hand. It's close to them. You want to get them to smell it so that they're, they're fully associated. Then you have them rate how they currently feel about that person on a scale of 0 to 10. So on a desire of, you desire to this, where are you now? As you think about it, as you look at it. A lot of people will say 15. I don't want you to think about that over lunch, okay? <laughs> All over your lunch. Okay. Then, first of all, if, say, for example, they say 10, you don't say what well, have to happen to make that an 8. Right? Because some people say, I can't. So you ask them first to increase the design. Right? That's very, very important. And the reason that's important is because if they can increase the design, guess what? That means they're in control, doesn't it? Yeah. It's very important. If you ever work with people with pain, as a symptom, you tell them to reduce the pain, they'll say, get lost, I can't do it, it's terrible. You say them to increase it, and they can, which they will be able to, guess what, they're in control. Yeah. So you increase it by a couple of things, by about two. Then you get them to bring it back to where it was, and then you slowly and incrementally bring it back, down and down and down, Constantly checking to make sure that the person is still associated to that thing by putting it back under their nose, having them take a good look at it. They've got to look at it because you're, what you're doing is anchoring that. Yeah, Peter was trying to turn away and move it. You notice his, his hand was trying to go over there, trying to move it out of the way, and his head was going that way. And as I pushed it further, his head was going that way. You've got to get them to, to focus on it because you will attach that feeling of revulsion to, to the thing. And you keep doing that, making sure the person is fully associated by asking the question, what would have to happen to make that whatever? That's all you need to remember. Yeah? So very important. Now let's say you want to do it in another way, like for example, for yourself. Let's say you want to motivate yourself to go jogging, right? And you can do it now, but you're not really enjoying it. Now, do you think it would be useful for your own friend, personal um, well-being, to, to be able to increase the good feelings about doing something like that? So, you ask yourself the question, so on a scale of 0 to 10, where am I now on my motivation to go jogging? I go 4. So you great. So you ask yourself the question, well, what would have to happen to make it a 3? Well, it would have to be raining. <laughs> you know, well, okay. So they go, great, what would have to happen to make it a 5? Well, you know, it'd be a nice sunny day. What would have to happen to make it a six? Well, um, I could put personal stereo on and listen to some motivational type music. Okay, so if you were to, if you were to be jogging and you had uh, motivational music on your headset, would that make it a six? Yeah. yeah. What would have to happen to make it an eight? 
well, if I had someone who would run with me, that would make it an eight. Great. So if you imagine that, you've got your headset on, motivation music, and you've got someone running along with you, only running along with you. Is that an eight? Yeah, great. What would I have to have to make it a ten? Well, you're running along, you've got the motivation music on, your partner's running along with you, um, and you're also remembering to do your incantations. I'm a lean, mean rain machine. I'm a lean, mean running machine. If you were to do that, would that make it 10? Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah? So you get how that works. All the time. All you're asking the question is what would happen if, what would have to happen to make it that? And it takes your mind in that direction. So you can do with it absolutely anything. You can increase or decrease the emotional intensity of any experience. And the great thing about it is once you start doing this, and particularly with yourself, then you'll find a lot of your excuses will go. Because when you find yourself in a situation where, you, where in the past you would have felt helpless, you will now realize that you are in control. Because you can increase it and decrease it at will just by asking the question, what would have to happen to make it that? So I don't care what situation you've ever been in your life, and how you felt at that time, whether it had been the most wonderful occasion of your life or the worst moment of your life, if you ask the question, what would have to happen to increase it, either way, you could do it, yeah? If someone had just died, you could make yourself feel even worse, couldn't you? Yeah? If you can make yourself feel even worse, that proves you're in control, doesn't it? So you can take it the other way. So the more you begin to practice things like this, of the moment you start feeling something, perhaps you don't like it, you ask yourself the question, what have to happen to make this even worse? Oh God, I think thing that bad things happen. Great, you now prove you're in control. And what will happen is your mind will start to generalize this. It will start to get the idea that you are in control of the level of intensity. And you can shift it at will. Just shift that chair around your way. This no, one, no. <laughs> 280 degrees is your mind. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> So is that a good technique? It's absolutely incredible and it's just so simple.